Strangers come to the aid of a 12-year-old girl. A clean sweep for police trying to get kids off the street and why Paula Abdul could be in trouble with the law. From KGW, where the news comes first, this is Northwest News Channel 8 at 11. Police say a man tried to kidnap a 12-year-old girl in the middle of a busy clothing store. But the girl got away, and the man is in jail thanks to a group of good Samaritans. And they were trying to stop him, keep him from getting out, so they did what they could do. Hello, I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm Joe Donlin. Thanks for joining us. It's our top story at 11. It happened on Southeast 82nd in Clackamas, and that's where News Channel 8's Jack Penning is tonight to tell us how some brave people help police. Jack? Well, that's right, Joe. It was a bunch of people who worked in stores around here who ended up trapping this man before he could get away. Police say that they have been looking for this guy since the beginning of February. They were worried that he would get more bold, and tonight they say that's exactly what happened. Police arrest 36-year-old Francisco Estrada. They believe he's the guy they've been looking for for a long time after four attempted abductions centered around Southeast 82nd. He is our primary suspect in those four cases. An incident at this Ross store led police to Estrada, who they say tried once again to kidnap a 12-year-old. They actually pulled her arm and started pulling her out of the store. She yelled and she screamed and she got away from him and ran to an employee for help. The suspect didn't get far. As he ran out of Ross, he was surrounded by employees from other stores. Everybody seemed to pitch in. I know they were trying to block him at the door. I heard him interviewing a few people out there who were involved, and, and they were trying to stop him, keep him from getting out, so they did what they could do. This was a good job by everybody involved. Police had been particularly worried about these cases because it appeared the suspect was getting bolder with each attempt. Police urged nearby schools to send letters informing parents of the danger. He was getting more and more bold, more and more brazen. He was getting more forward with the girls that he was trying to, to get. Now police are hopeful they have their man behind bars. Police say they are still questioning Estrada tonight. They also say a woman was injured inside the Ross store when she tried to stop him from getting out. He threw her up against a wall, police say. She was taken to the hospital. She's still there tonight, but police say she is expected to fully recover. Back to you. Well, great to see people get involved. Thank you, Jack. A tragic ending tonight to the search for a missing Florida girl. Police say a person of interest in the case has now confessed to killing her. Investigators say 46-year-old John Cooey confessed to kidnapping, then killing 9-year-old Jessica Lunsford. This is video of the registered sex offender from an unrelated story. He'd been staying with relatives who lived across the street from Jessica. The sheriff says Cooey told police where to search for Jessica's body. The confession came after the FBI gave Cooey a polygraph test. And at the end of the polygraph, he says, you don't need to tell me the results. I already know what they are. I will tell you that we have built a case, a very methodical case, and uh, I've got my man. Jessica's mother, who lives in Ohio, broke down in tears when she heard the news. She's angry the convicted sex offender was let out of jail in the first place. This man's hurt too many people. He's hurt too many children, and one of them is my daughter. He took her life from her, and she didn't deserve it. Jessica had been missing since February 23rd. Police have been searching an area near Jessica's home for her body. No word yet if they've found anything. Portland police are looking for teenagers out past midnight. It's an annual problem during spring break. News Channel 8's Andrea Cantu joins us now live from downtown. What do parents need to know, Andrea? Well, Joe, if your child is under the age of 18, they should be home about an hour from now. Police began a search tonight at about 10 o'clock. Tell me what you plan to do for spring break. Party. <laughs> Classes are over and teens are making plans for spring break 2005. Here in North Portland, many won't be heading to the beach. They'll be hanging out at your local park. It's just like a big party in the park. Because it's so much fun over here. And it's spring break now, so it's going to be even bigger. And police will be watching, making sure everyone gets home at a reasonable hour. With uh, groups of juveniles congregating in area parks like Kenton Park or Pier Park, uh, and they can be involved in either alcohol-related or curfew violations. Breaking curfew could get your teen picked up by police. Here's what you need to know. In Multnomah County, kids younger than 14 have to be inside between 10:15 at night and 6 in the morning. 
Teens 14 and older must be in between 11.59 at night and 6 in the morning. Police say the purpose of a curfew is to keep the kids safe. Teens agree, saying they've seen dangerous situations come up after dark. Drugs, Drugs gangs. <laughs> yeah, gangs, fighting and stuff. Last year, five arrests were made in the North Portland Precinct. Most were minors in possession of alcohol. Officers hope this year will be quiet and kids will head home before they have to give them a ride. Now, curfew rules are in effect all year round, but during breaks and vacations, police officers make an extra effort to get kids home and make sure they're home before curfew. Back to you guys. Thanks, Andrea. A Portland high school turned into a crime scene today when a fight between students ended with a stabbing. Witnesses say the fight started inside a classroom at Marshall High and spilled outside. The student who was stabbed is expected to recover. A 15-year-old was arrested and is now facing assault charges in the case. Students and neighbors say they're troubled by the violence. Yeah, it just, you know, kind of makes you a little worried of, you know, being that close to you, you know, if anything could possibly happen to you or not. We have a lot of little kids around here. We got, you know, a little boy that lives right next door to us, and it's kind of sad. Officers also arrested a 16-year-old involved in the fight. Drivers, keep a close eye on your cars. Auto thefts are on the rise in both Portland and Vancouver. Today, Vancouver police started handing out free steering wheel locks. The department bought 80 of them at a discounted rate. Within a few hours, they were all gone. Last year, Vancouver police reported more than 1,100 vehicles stolen. Criminals often target late model Hondas, Toyotas, and Acuras. Vancouver police say prevention is critical in cutting down on thefts. I, as a person, need to take the extra step and, and come down and get a bar to go on the car steering wheel and, and, and use it. And that's the most important thing. I could put this in the trunk and never use it, and but I picked it up, but I'm not that way. Now, this will get used, and it'll get used every time that the car's away from the house. So what's prompting this spike in the numbers? Police blame it all on methamphetamine and drug abusers. We have a warning tonight about mail theft. Police say you need to be extra careful with your income tax return. Steve Ekman learned this lesson the hard way. He dropped his tax return in his mailbox. When he went to check on it in the morning, it was gone. Steve's got a hold of his Social Security number and mortgage information. Also access to his checking account. Three to five years were at risk for identity theft. Wow. So we have to keep our eyes open, watch the accounts really closely. After the incident, Ekman went out, bought a mailbox with a lock on it. As always, postal officials say it's a good idea to put important mail in a blue U.S. Postal Service mailbox. Police need your help finding whoever is trying to sabotage boaters on the Sandy River. In at least two spots, someone has implanted nails in the rocks. The spikes stick up just below the surface of the water, waiting to rip open inflatable rafts floating by. It's worked twice. Two rafts have had large gashes torn in them. The Sandy River is popular for fishing and rafting, and there's no apparent motive. But it is clear, police say, this is very deliberate sabotage. This is a deliberate act. Somebody has put these into the rocks. And it took a lot of effort and some specialized equipment and tools to do it. So it wasn't a, wasn't a spur-of-the-moment thing. This is, this is well thought out. This is kind of Unabomber stuff. Rafters are concerned these two cases may not be the only nails in the river. In the meantime, deputies want to hear from you if you have any information on this case. Under fire again tonight, Oregon State is calling for big changes after a rash of incidents involving football players. The most recent happened last week when 20-year-old Ben Siegert was arrested for drunk driving. Police say Siegert had a stolen ram in the back of his pickup. And while it appears to be a prank, the athletic department isn't laughing. Ten OSU football players have had brushes with police since the fall. Athletic Director Bob DeCarroll is, calls it embarrassing. I know that we are doing alcohol management and alcohol awareness classes. Having said that, in 2005, why would anybody have drinks and get behind the wheel of a car, particularly when we had one of our student athletes a year ago almost killed after a game? A complete review of the school's policies will be complete in the next 45 days. For the first time in Rose Festival history, a single mom has been crowned an ambassador. The choice is causing a controversy. Tonight, that young mother is defending her selection. News Channel 8's Nicole Dahl reports. Roosevelt's 2005 Rose Festival ambassador is Rosa Montoya. Screaming girls, big smiles, Roosevelt's Rose Fest assembly was... A mirror image of the other high schools as they crowned their 2005 ambassadors. 
But Roosevelt's choice is a different reflection of teenage girls. I have a child and a lot of people don't agree with it. Seven weeks ago, Ambassador Rosa Montoya gave birth to a baby girl, Kiara. The 18-year-old senior was the first single mother ever selected as a Rose Fest ambassador. And now some in the community are questioning whether she is an appropriate role model. A local radio station mm -hmm. that had a little call-in show last night, and I listened to the same station, the same show, and I heard mostly supportive comments from the public, and our office has gotten very few comments today, um, not even a dozen. A lot of people saying um, it's a bad role model, but I think everybody needs a role model, even the teen moms out there, to show that they, they too can go after their dreams and their hopes and plans, and they shouldn't let that, anything stop them from doing that. Rose Festival organizers say there are no rules prohibiting it, so it won't affect who's chosen queen. Rosa says she was surprised to be picked by her fellow students, but is grateful for the opportunity. I have the courage and strength and I'm determined to do my best. Rosa has already been accepted to Portland State where she plans to major in business. It's been a major development today in the case of a severely brain damaged Florida woman. Coming up, find out what a court decided that may put an end to this nationwide debate. Plus, she's a judge on American Idol. Why Paula Abdul may have to go before a judge in a court of law. And spring breakers may have some company this year on the beach. Sharks are on the prowl. Find out where coming up. And for spring break, cloudy skies are moving back into the Northwest. And it looks like it's going to be a damp spring break. We'll talk about that. In the meantime, a live look from our camera down in Salem, where it's cloudy and 48 degrees. Now, back to Joe Donlan and Laurel Porter on Northwest News Channel 8. A major development today in the case of a severely brain-damaged woman at the center of a national debate. And that tops our news beyond the Northwest. The feeding tube keeping Terry Schiavo alive has now been removed. Last-minute pleas from the U.S. Congress did not block the tube's removal. A judge denied those requests. And with Schiavo no longer receiving food or water, it is not clear how long she will live. Terry Schiavo's husband said Terry never wanted to live by artificial means, but Schiavo's parents have fought to keep her alive. The former governor of Connecticut is headed to prison. John Rowland was sentenced to a year behind bars on a federal corruption charge. He told the judge he's ashamed and accepts full responsibility for his actions. The three-term Republican governor also said he lost sight of his ethical judgment. He resigned from office last summer. Walmart will pay $11 million to settle allegations and used illegal immigrants to clean its stores. Immigration officials say they uncovered cases of at least 250 illegal immigrants employed by janitor contracting services. Attorneys for the immigrants say many of them worked seven days a week without overtime pay. The settlement clears Walmart of federal charges. Prosecutors will soon decide whether to charge American Idol judge Paula Abdul with hit and run. The incident happened last December. That's when investigators say a Mercedes-Benz clipped another car on a Los Angeles freeway. The driver of the Mercedes didn't stop to exchange information. Police later traced the car to Abdul. For the second time this week, yikes, sharks have been spotted swimming close to the shore of a popular Florida beach. Look at all those sharks. At least six today were seen about 100 yards off the coast of Del Rey Beach. That's near Palm Beach County. Officials put up red flags in the area to keep swimmers out of the water. Now on Tuesday, hundreds of small sharks were spotted along the same coastline, swarming just a few feet from swimmers. Look at how, it looks like a pool almost, doesn't it? it? Takes a bite out of a spring break there, doesn't it? Well, they're there for spring break too, apparently. Sharks. Yeah, you wouldn't need a red flag to keep me out of the water. Yeah. Well, a little cold if you're heading out to the Oregon coast uh, for spring break. Water temperatures in the Pacific Ocean will be in the 50s. And it's going to be cloudy and it's going to be damp for a good portion of spring break week. Start out right now with a live look at live first alert Doppler 8000. Look at that. Cloudy skies are overhead and already picking up a little bit of rain, mainly down in the Willamette Valley, just to the uh, east of Salem right here, seeing some showers moving up out of the south. And there's more, a lot more on the way between now and tomorrow morning. All right, live look outside from our Wells Fargo Sky Cam. We do have overcast skies at this time, folks. Current temperature 49 degrees, winds calm, humidity 71%, and the barometer is still dropping this hour down to 29.63, and the freezing level at 4,800 feet. All right, if you're heading out to the Oregon coast tomorrow for the spring beach cleanup, be prepared for wet weather. Occasionally heavy rain at times and blustery conditions, and tomorrow morning's temperatures on the Oregon coast, kind of chilly besides wet. 
between 41 and 46 degrees. And there those winds out of the southeast, 15 to 30 miles an hour. Show you why it's going to be a rainy and blustery day on the coast tomorrow. It is right here. We have a big area of low pressure up to the south of us. Here's a cold front coming on in, stretching out right now. Clouds moving up out of the south. In those clouds, plenty of rain, folks. And we're going to see wet weather all weekend long. A very soggy weekend, perhaps the rainiest weekend we've seen since mid-February. Take a look at our future CAS computer model. Tomorrow morning at 7, it's rain all the way from southwest Washington through Portland, up and down the Willamette Valley, and yes, on the Oregon coast. Cascades, you'll start out the day with rain, snow level about 6,000 feet. Moisture keeps moving up out of the south. There's 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then between Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, cooler air moves on in. Still rain for the valley, but in the mountains, it's going to be snow down to about 3,000 feet. And it looks like maybe upwards of a half foot to 10 inches of snow possible for the Oregon and the Washington Cascades from late Saturday through Sunday and even into Monday. So our forecast tomorrow for the Oregon coast, Rain at times, gusty winds, high wind watch in effect for tomorrow for the Oregon coast. And just after midnight tonight, we'll see a gale flag going up along the entire length of the ocean beaches. Southeast winds 15 to 25, gusts to 40. Tomorrow's highs will reach the lower 50s for the Oregon coast. Now, for the Willamette Valley, going to have cloudy skies there as well. Rain at times, south winds 15 to 25 miles an hour. Tomorrow's highs will be up into the 50s. For the Cascades, cloudy skies, rain and or snow. The snow level initially about 6,000 feet, then falling down to about 3,000 feet late on Saturday evening. Past temperatures tomorrow will be in the mid-30s to lower 40s. In the gorge, it's cloudy and rainy at times. East winds there picking up 20 to 30 miles an hour. Highs will be in the 50s. Tonight's lows in the 30s. Central and eastern Oregon, cloudy skies, areas of rain. And tomorrow's highs in the 50s to low 60s. Now, here in Portland, cloudy skies tonight, some rain developing after midnight. And then for tomorrow, soggy all day long, 55 for a high. It's on Saturday. And then there you see Saturday through the end of next week, plenty of rain or rain showers with highs in the 50s. Isn't that just like spring break in the Northwest? It's the way it always has been. <laughs> Thank right. you, Dave. What a night of college basketball tonight, Joe. Joe, most basketball fans have never heard of a college named the Catamounts. For the Catamounts can, and that amounts to one of the two major upsets, the madness next in sports. Round one of the NCAA tournament is over, and it's upset city with a pair of underdogs taking it. We start in Oklahoma City, the Bison of Buck now. Leading third-ranked Kansas by one, but the Jayhawks get two free throws in the lead. Time running down. Chris McNaughton put Bucknell back on top by one. Kansas gets one last chance. Baseball pass. Wayne Simeon has the shot. He misses, and Bucknell pulls off the upset. A 14th seed beats the Jayhawks 64-63. The first NCAA tournament win in the 110-year history of the school. The other great game in Worcester, Massachusetts, Vermont and Syracuse, it was tight the whole way. Game tied final seconds. Jermaine Mopagila scores in the baseline, but the basket's no good. Stepped on the baseline, they're going overtime. Mopagila had 20 points, hits the big three, Vermont on top. Then check out TJ Sorrentine's deep three. Four point lead for Vermont. Syracuse gets it down three with a chance to tie, but Jerry McNamara misses the shot. Vermont upsets third seeded Syracuse 60 57. The Catamounts' first ever NCAA victory. Checking the scoreboard, it was Iowa State over Minnesota. North Carolina big over Oakland from Michigan. Florida beat Ohio. Villanova over New Mexico by eight. NC State beat Charlotte. UConn defending champ beat UCF. Oklahoma State over Southeast Louisiana. Southern Illinois is a winner. Duke beat Delaware State by 11. Mississippi State beat Stanford. Shocker, they're 93-70. Louisville over Louisiana Lafayette. Georgia Tech wins. And Michigan State and Wisconsin, the other two winners. Nearly 9,000 fans on hand at the Rose Garden. They saw the Hawks face their arch rival, Seattle. These two teams don't like each other. Almost every time they play their fisted cuffs, it's wild. Good night for the Hawks, though. Daryl May will get the puck on the breakaway. 
He will score. Hawks have the lead. They never lost it. They hang on to beat Seattle 2-1. to one. Major change in the Ducks track program. Head coach Martin Smith has resigned under pressure just one day before the start of the outdoor season. Smith has taken some heat in recent months for the direction of his program. The Ducks will honor his contract. It runs three more years. He'll get $450,000. Final, Mariners took on the Giants spring training and newcomer Richie Sexton hits a mammoth home run. Two run shot in the sixth, went almost 500 feet. His first home of the spring. Mariners beat the Giants. Final score was 4-2. to two. Seattle will open the regular season April 4th in Seattle against Minnesota. What a night. Yeah, lots going on. Fun. A lot of people at that hockey game. They've been getting a lot of good crowds. Nice. Thanks, Joe. This looks like something from MTV Cribs or maybe Lifestyles of Rich and Famous, where this lavish bathroom is located and why anyone can use it. And remember to watch your late evening news an hour earlier. You'll find us all on PAX every night at 10. PAX is Channel 5 on cable. And if you don't have cable, it's Channel 54 in the Portland metro area. We'll be right back. Another big donation today for the News Channel 8 Great Food Drive. Grocery Outlet donated 1,000 hams. That's 5,000 pounds of food. But we still need your help to reach our goal of 1 million pounds by the end of the month. And Joe is live in the food box. How are we doing, Joe? We're doing great. We are really getting there, Laurel. We have just a couple weeks left, and we are fast approaching the 400,000 pound mark. So we're getting to the halfway mark, hoping to get there by the end of this month. And as a lot of us are getting ready for spring break, thinking about perhaps how we're going to spend some time over the next week with family, think for just a minute about wondering where your next meal is going to come from. A lot of families in Oregon are in that position, and that's why we're doing this. Our great food drive, and we'd like to have you help us out if you haven't already. Stop by any Albertsons. You can buy a $9.99 bag of groceries that actually contains $20 worth of food. Check your statement on Northwest Natural for more ideas as well. You can drop donations of food here at News Channel 8, 15th and Jefferson, or at any U.S. bank branch, food or cash donations. And there's another special uh, collection point tomorrow. This is the Albertsons in Vancouver on uh, Southeast 164th Avenue. So we invite you to stop by there as well, and we thank you for your help. Back with more right after this. It is probably one of the nicest public restrooms in California in a place you wouldn't expect to find it. Check out this bathroom inside a Chevron station of all places near Los Angeles. It has a chandelier, faux travertine walls, silver columns, a marble counter, and fancy tiled floor. <laughs> the owner says he wanted to give the greatest look he could. The problem is they still have the key attached to a spare tire <laughs> that you have right. to go inside to get. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend, Leonardo DiCaprio on Leno Next. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching the area's number one 11 o'clock news. Named best newscast by the Associated Press and Emmy winner for overall station excellence. Northwest News Channel 8, where the news comes first.